Smartphones were invented as a kamikaze attack on the camera industry, much like Zoolander assassinated his first model. The smartphone killed off the point and shoot first, but had his sights on higher prizes. And we might be looking at Micro Four Thirds next. All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. Can you imagine the panic in the camera industry? You produce cameras, nice professional ones, but also these point and shoots and bridge cams and all this stuff. You have the market cornered. And then all of a sudden, I think it was the iPhone maybe came out first. It's like, we take pictures too in your phone. Order a pizza, then take a picture of the pizza guy. And then like all of a sudden they started getting really good. And it's like, everybody has the phone in the pocket. Not me personally, just scrubbed brainwashed freaks like you, jellyfish. And everyone's like, oh, I'm taking a picture. Oh, look, I can send it to my mom. Selfie. I hate my generation. So smartphones definitely killed off the point and shoot. I still see some for sale. Some guys like, buy this, Canon S90. Whoa, so much better than your smartphone. It's not, and now that we can like fake blur the background, I don't know, man, there's a lot of gimmicks in here that are fun. I'm looking at my smartphone, by the way. As you can see, smartphones are very accurate in their blurry backgrounds. You thought I was filming on a full frame camera because it's so realistic and real. Even when I move around, the edge detection software technology is unheard of good. This is good. It's so real that it hurts. It hurts me being so real. Just seeing the edges of that camera, like the fall off, the ton of fall off is unreal. Yes, I am filming with a LED light bounced off a moving box. That's what a professional does. I went out a couple weeks ago with some friends. We did an escape room. It was pretty fun. We did not escape. And I took a picture of us with my smartphone and it like blurred the background and I was like kind of blown away by the image. I can only show you on Instagram because I don't have access to the file. But like I was like, that's a nice shot. That's better than I would have done with a professional camera. I would have missed something. And it made it easy to put a little timer. It continues to focus on us. And this is how unicorns are born. All right, I can't see the shot because there's no second screen on the front. But here we have a smartphone now and it looks much worse in my opinion. Yeah, we went up to 4K now. I was in 1080p before. It's just something about the smartphone look. Over contrasty, over saturated, over sharpened, over everything overachieving just calm down you bunch of dicks everybody keeps saying oh will you review this latest xiaomi me 11 me 12 me go home no they're just always so bad and the iphones like the 14 pro like give me a break you're still over sharpening and unusable in my opinion and you don't even have 970 frames per second now side by side with not even like a class leading camera here, 1080p Olympus EM13 with this, like come on, this looks much better, the Olympus, it's much more natural and real. That's what matters. But when you take it out in the field, this thing has some tricks up its sleeve. I got a bunch of cool comparisons here I was feeding a chickadee in the hand with my sunflower seeds and for this I was doing 1920 frames per second which is not frame interpolated and then I also did some 7680 frames per second and you have it on a trigger so you just press record you arm it you have the box on your hand and then when a chickadee lands it just records it and it's like so perfect and fun so I also did that with the Olympus, with this same 12 mil Tony 2. I tried in 4K, 24p, and then HD, 120. So first, here's the smartphone. That was just so awesome. It flies in zippity quick, and then it's on its side, and it's like, oh, whoa, we changed direction in midair. But it's basically the most awesome thing anyone's ever seen in their life. He's 
landing on my hand, will he kill me? Versus a real camera. And it's like, okay, now the bird's out of focus. I did not plan that shot quite right, did I? I focused on the sunflower seeds. That's a rookie error. This was an HD 120 frames per second. It took a while for him to get used to me with this new camera. He's like, he was a bit camera shy. He's like, is this the professional camera? Oh man, it was fine with the smartphone. I don't know about this. Um, I hope they don't see my acne. But it's such a difference. Like just in quality, like the camera looks much better, but the phone is much cooler because it's so much slower. And that's the thing with smartphones. Like they have these unheard of specs that camera companies aren't doing and it makes it fun. There's only a few like Sony cameras that do the 960 frames per second and they have no motion trigger box. Like it's not as easy to use. Now here was one of the better shots. A chickadee lands on my hand. We're in HD 120 frames. I realize, okay, he's out of focus there. I'm trying to move a little closer to get him in focus. And then we had like a magical moment there. Did I ever make it? Yeah, now he's in focus. And it's like, okay, a smartphone's never gonna beat that. And in 4K, look at this. Chickadee comes, he's like, oh my God, a nut hatcher. A freaking nut hatcher landed in my hand as well. He's the boss of the chickadees. That's what I've noticed. The chickadee will land, then the nut hatcher's like, no, mine. So if you're wondering the tier list of nature, it's that. That happened a couple times actually. Chickadee's like, hey, no, never mind. I don't, I don't need one. Didn't even want one actually. So the thing that makes the smartphone so much cooler is we get a rare shot of him leaving my hand for once. Wow, the motion trigger delay on that one. And this one, we, he comes in. If the camera had these super slow motion specs, we might have something and a motion trigger to make things easier but we don't like that's the thing these camera companies don't s seem to think we need these specs i want super super duper slow mo that's the only reason i bought that huawei p40 pro it had 7000 frames and i watched some reviews of it and it looked halfway decent like parents throwing water balloons at their kids heads and i was like that's usable that's totally usable and i it's the one purchase i've never regretted I've gotten life-changing footage with this thing. And when you go for the 7,000 frames per second, even though it's frame interpolated, it's not always like the smoothest thing with the wings, you get moments that you would never notice in real life, like so slow, otherworldly slow, that you see the details of life. What if a chickadee gave you a slow blink? How would you know? unless you were filming at 7,000 frames per second. In my opinion, smartphones are still nowhere near the quality of an actual mirrorless camera, but these camera companies are so behind the times that like the next generation coming up want fun things to do. I had my smartphone when we went to my fiance's sister's house and they have a couple kids and this has this silly, stupid little mode where like, you have a cartoon head and it's mimicking your facial expressions. And so like they were having a blast just recording little 10 second clips of them as lizards and penguins. And that's the fun thing smartphones can do. Do I have that mode in the Olympus? I'm missing it. Some might say it's a gimmick, but it's not. This is really good. It's good. It's good. It's good. This is good content. So like fun shit like that, and then the slow-mo. Smartphones are more fun, but if you want the cinema in your heart, you find a little red squirrel out there. You got a 12 mil prime lens, you're right up to the thing. It's like, wow, does it get sharper than that? I think it does not. It's just beautiful, punching right in on it. I think I was not on the 12 mil there. <laughs> I was on the 75 to 300 because I'm so zoomed, but I did a bunch of 12 mil prime wildlife examples and it was really fun. But in my opinion, the difference between nice micro four thirds footage versus a smartphone, like 
the Micro Four Thirds is so much better than the smartphone. It's a bigger difference than like full frame versus Micro Four Thirds. There's like a definite increase in quality going to full frame, but with the smartphone, it's another worldly bad. Just fun, slower, fun, but not good. Remember I was telling you these ducks came up to me from a river. I finally got it. I just walk by and they're all coming up to me. I guess they're so used to being fed. I've never had them. Like ducks in this area are so chill. They just, do they even know that I would eat duck? Because I have done it and they're delicious. I could have just grabbed one rotisserie duck later on tonight. You know what I mean? But this is where I brought my 12 mil out. And I was like, the wildlife is coming so close to me. I bet I could just like film it with this prime and I did. <laughs> I got all this like there's a duck next to a squirrel with a bunch of chipmunks running around. It was hilarious. Ducks just gobble that up. The sunflower seeds, they eat them whole. Will that give them a tummy ache later? I hope not. But man, do they ever. You can see the squirrel. They grab like one at a time, crack it open. It takes them like 10 seconds to eat just one, where the duck is just scooping them into its mouth. It's not fair. And then the chipmunk strategy is to just gather them all in a mouth like the duck, but not just eat them, save them for later. So their cheeks just get bigger and bigger as they go. <laughs> it's pretty funny, they are cute. I love the wide angle wildlife. If you can make it happen, it's like, yeah, why not? It's so much more immersive, like you feel like you're there and close to the animal. That's not usually going to happen unless you're a criminal going to a zoo, paying for slaves. Yeah. Most reviewers online, they're like, oh, let's go to the zoo. You're a criminal and you should be arrested. Now, if I was going out again to get chipmunk footage, as you can see side by side, the smartphone looks absolutely horrendous. It's slower, but it was like unnecessary slowness. The chipmunk didn't do a whole lot. It's tough to get chipmunks to do something freaky. If you got the perfect moment where there was like one chipmunk coming in to attack another, and that's in 7,000 frames per second, like it would be life-changing footage. But like just a general trying to pick a moment where you see a chipmunk, you're like, yeah, you're not really gonna get anything unique. So for wildlife, I think smartphones have a place if you can get things close to you. The telephoto capabilities of smartphones is nowhere near ready yet. And you get none of these fun features in those zoom lenses, so that's over with. But for like YouTube and vlogging, I still think they're much further behind. Terrible skin tones, just nasty footage. In my opinion, they're not even close to killing off. I'd rather have a one inch sensor compact camera probably even less than that i guarantee you little canon s120 would look better than this more pleasing skin tones nicer colors real so like you're so far away will these smartphone companies ever learn though like we keep telling them stop making it look so fake and nasty and barbie skin just do something real i think sony's the only one actually doing that like a flat profile but it's Sony color science. Don't disgust my mouth while I say it. So like smartphone companies have to learn to get a more natural image. Camera companies need to learn how to have more fun and slow motion and up those specs even if it's only a two second burst recording. You know how many capable cameras are capable right now of doing like 960 frame in a burst? Probably all of them, but nobody's doing it they don't know that I need it so do it so in my opinion cameras are still safe we still have a place and me having this channel it's a camera based channel I'm not irrelevant not at all so smartphones you suck fun but in a sucky way and I don't mind it I don't mind it there's a lot of room for improvement we're not there yet even though you're pretending to collab with like Leica and Zeiss lenses and Hasselblad and it's not the same color science at all. I have 27 seconds left to make my point. Thank you for buying a Camera Conspiracies t-shirt and all the equipment through my affiliate link so I make money to buy more smartphones.
Huh? I did not use that time properly. I'm going to leave, though. After you subscribe. Three seconds.